Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today, be prepared or be consumed. Yes, we're talking about no other game than The Others, a horror board game by Eric M. Lang, brought to you by Cool Mini or Not, Guillotine Games, and of course, Studio McVeigh. There are so many expansions to this game, which you'll see at a later date with the other unboxings that I'll be doing. But right now we're talking about the core game. So to use any of the expansions, you need to have this box game right here, the others. So let's flip this around and see what we got and what this is all about. Our darkest secrets, our darkest secrets have manifested. Our inner monsters now roam the streets. The sins that once tormented our souls are poised to consume the entire world. All that stands against this nightmare is faith. We must fight fire with fire and pray the flames of corruption don't engulf us all. The Others is a horror board game for two to five players. While one player controls the nightmare's forces of sin trying to consume the ancient city of Haven, the rest control the agents of faith, a paranormal organization employing unorthodox heroes to stand against the monstrous invasion. The sin forces of both pride and sloth contained in this box, as well as the three different types of acolytes, each bring a completely different challenge to the hero players as they face the apocalypse across seven different stories with unique maps. While the sins player use the powers of the others to annihilate the faith agents, the hero players need to cooperate, use the city to their advantage, and even dabble in the seductive powers of corruption to fulfill their missions. Be prepared or be consumed. This game meant for two to five players, ages 14 plus. It takes at least an hour and a half to play a scenario. Again, if you look over here on the right, it tells you just a little bit about the game contents. We've got 47 highly detailed miniatures, 10 city tiles, six boards of the Sin players, eight hero dashboards, seven storyboards, 70 cards, 88 cardboard tokens, 27 sculpted plastic tokens, eight colored bases, 14 custom dice, one rule book. There are your heroes. You have eight pride monsters. You have eight sloth monsters. And you have a bunch of acolytes, 18 of those. And you also have the Hell Club as well down at the bottom. Again, this is brought to you by Student McVeigh, Guillotine Games. For more information, go to guillotinegames.com. Or, of course, you go over to simon.com as well. Enough of the pictures. Let's crack this bad boy open and see what we have inside. And this is an extremely heavy box. For those who uh, don't own this already, this is an extremely heavy box filled with all kinds of goodness. So let's crack it open and see what kind of stuff we got on the side. And like so many other Simon games, we've got plenty of stuff on the inside. We've got our rule book, pretty hefty, thick rule book. And we'll get to the rest of the stuff in a minute. So let's put that to the side. And let's take a look here at our rule book. Pretty massive rule book. It's got a total of, let's see, it's got numbers here. Nope. So let's take a look what it says on the inside. It's an interview with a killer, the others. It gives you a bunch of fluff about the background of the whole game and starts talking about the rules. So. Again, gives you a little bit more background about the past events that led up to this. We've got a table of contents, all right? So we've got about 44 pages of instructions and rules in here. All the game components, pictures, outlaid. Tells you exactly what they are, what your eight hero figures look like in their names. The storyboards, the apocalypse track, sin boards, acolyte boards, and monster figures. You got your Hell Club figures and your Acolyte figures. Game overview. You choose player roles. Your game setup. You either choose Sin, choose an Acolyte, choose a story, choose a map, choose heroes, and final preparations. So choosing Sin, choose an Acolyte, choose a story. There's three types of stories in the others, terror, corruption, or redemption. 
first play. It's recommended that first time players choose the story, uh, the terror story Haven's Last Stand as their introduction to the others. Okay. Makes sense. You choose a map. Choose your heroes. Advanced team building. The discs on the bottom tells you what color they are based on their bruiser is red, a shooter is blue, a fixer is green, and the leader is yellow. That'll all be explained in here. Uh, the starting space, the faith token. Final preparations, upgrade inventory, sin cards, reaction tokens. And that's how the board should look on your first play. Difference between victory and defeat, game sequence, start of round, hero turn, sin reaction, and then the end of round. Start of round, beginning of round story tasks, decide the first hero, hero turns. Spend a turn token. Move and take an action, move, take an action, start a fight. Cleanse an area. City actions. Now, there's lots of different icons that are used throughout the game. Tokens, as you could tell. You have heal, repent, extra turn, inventory, orbital strike. All those will be explained in the rulebook, what they mean, how to use them. Sin reactions. Spend a reaction token, move a monster, start a fight with a current hero. End of round, end of round story tasks, summon monsters. Draw extra sin cards. Reset tokens. Unite or fall. Component overview. You have your game board. You have district spaces, street spaces, permanent tokens, city action slots, and city actions. All that is explained on the game board here. I'm going to show you all kinds of photos, layouts of how the boards look, what each section represents numbered beautifully. It's a well-designed rule book that gives you a lot of examples, um, more examples than you ever need to have when it comes to a, a game. Storyboard, name and type, the story, beginning of round, end of round, special rules, missions, mission progress. All that information is located on your mission boards. Okay. Missions, hero numbers, hero dashboards, how to read a hero dashboard. Name and quote, class, leader, fixer, shooter, bruiser, bite stat, skill stat, base defense, natural abilities. Events. So break it down. The class, name and quote, skill stats, bite stat, base defense, natural ability. Secondary dashboard. Your character changes into somebody else. Your stats change. Sin boards, fight stats, defenses, sin powers. Active boards, fight stats, defense, acrylite ability, sin power. The different abilities for the each of the different acolytes that you choose. Apocalypse track and cards. The Hell Club. Sin cards, exploration tokens, regular tokens. So you've got fire tokens, corruption tokens, pentagram tokens, nest tokens. Extra turn token, innocent token, these are bystanders, commissioner token, proxy token. Raven Corp token, an altar token, metro tokens, and gorgeous artwork as always. Orbital strike, mark tokens, upgrade cards, dark past cards.
movement using the Metro teleporting fire and corruption tokens fire check spaces with monsters spaces with the heroes corruption check more examples more artwork rolling dice hero dice roll so let's see sin dice roll so we got the tentacle means the corruption the fist means a hit hit with a burst it counts as a hit result but also immediately roll an extra die if that die also results in a hit with burst roll an extra die and so on and so on blank means no effect all right so let's look at the example it says it sim player rolls three dice resulting in a tentacle and a hit with burst and a blank he rolls an extra die due to the hit with burst result and obtains a a hit final result is one corruption and two hits all right so that's for the sin players now hero dice roll is a hit counter corruption cancels one tentacle result obtained by the sin player good defense cancels one hit uh, result obtained by the sins player skill remove one exploration token from your space and faith immediately roll an extra die if that die also rolls in results in a faith roll an extra die and so on after all dice have been rolled the hero can turn each faith die result into any other result of his choice okay teamwork corruption fight hero preparation Sin preparation, fight resolution, effects on the hero. Effects on the monsters. Different examples. More examples. How to read these, how to use the dice, all these things. Ranged fight. from a distance. Don't necessarily stand in front of them. They're going to get destroyed in this game. Okay. Taking corruption. There's an ugly creature for you. Forced corruption. Voluntary corruption. Maximum corruption. Taking wounds. There you go, some of the baddies. How your hero can die. There's your index of all the stuff that you might need to look up. The end is near. Thanks for telling us. Here are the credits for all the good people who worked hard to bring us this game. And a rule summary on the back, which of course you need. City to actions, NPCs. There you go. All right. So there is your rule book. It's quite a tome. Here are your mission cards. Got a whole bunch of mission cards here. Let's see what we got here. Rise of the Hell Club. Final story. Start of the round, end of the round, special rules. Again, all listed here. Then you start in the top here, hero sacrifice. Reveal one apocalypse card. So you either go 2A or 2 You make the choice from there. Summon the avatar, reveal one apocalypse card. Jahina or Jahena is upon us. Mission progress. So I guess you got seven turns to uh, complete all this. Not sure, but we have to read that in a rule book, mission progress, or what you've accomplished and, and everything you're working on. There you go. So that's one of them. The Darkness Within, a corruption story, tempting fate. Again, all the information on the sides, mission progress chart, and again, your flow chart. Oh, on the back, it also gives you, sorry about that, on the back of these, it tells you how to use your maps and how to set them up. Map A, map B. There you go. That's the darkness within. 
map A and map B. Again, on there, it tells you right off the bat the location of the, of the tiles you'll be using, all the tokens you need to put place down, type of baddies that you're going to be using in there. It tells you all right there about what it is. Okay. The beast we, well, we, well, we become. Again, all the information is the same on that side and this side. Into the breach. The setups. Battleground of Souls. Again, a redemption story. How to set it up. These are nice thick. These are a nice thick cardstock. Bendable, but very, very, very durable. Like it a lot. Heaven's Last Stand, Terror Story. Or Haven's Last Stand, I should say, sorry. More maps. Set up. Haven in Flames, a Terror Story. Everything here is set up. And there are your missions. So you got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven missions. That's cool. It's a lot of good stuff there. And when I say you got tokens, you got a whole heck of a lot of tokens. I punched them all out already, but here they are. So we can show you a whole bunch of what these tokens look like. Right off the bat, you have a lot of these ones with question marks on it. You flip them over. All different kinds of tokens. Pentagrams, fire, tentacles. Again, these are all explained in the game, how to use them and all. But you got lots and lots of those. But they're all explained in the game. You got lots of them. Lots and lots of them. All right, so some of them also have, these are your non-player characters of the uncorrupted. So you're trying to save those people. So that's on the back of there also. Plus one turn or plus one activation, I should say. There you go. So, so flipping these over is important. You don't know what's in there, but you got to go for it. All right, you got that. Plus one again. And then the fire. So again, you got a whole heck of a lot of these question marks. So they're important to have. Get the pentagram, get more fire. Again, it's all stuff you're gonna have to deal with as you're going through your missions. Let's see what else we got here. We got plenty of these. Trying to get them all out so we don't have to keep looking at them. So let's see what we got here. We've got even more of these and more of these. Uncorrupted non player characters, flip them over the pentagram. And again, each icon represents something different. The pentagram, the fire, it's all explained in the rules what they're used for. The sun, got a bunch of those. Another one. I think that's oh, got a couple more over here. Your turn sequencers, your player turn. When you take your turn, you flip it over and you exhausted your turn. There it is. I'm assuming these are for the faith team because they're blue. I'm assuming these are your turns for Corrupted. Haven't taken your turn, I've taken your turn. Okay, more of those. Get more of those. Your non-player uh, players, your, I forget who this is, but that's your government. Put those two 
over there. All kinds of health tokens, different colors, green, yellow, red, blue, all there. For the different icons on the board, looks like a city. Both sides will appear to be the same. Some more of those question marks at the back. Another non-player character. I forget what it's for, but there it is. So it's, it'll all be explained in subway tokens. Again, all this stuff is outlined, explained to you how to use it in the rule core rule book. But that's your tokens for your subway. Again, another question mark. Ah, I get plus one activation or plus one turn. You get your orbital strike. Very cool. Then your turn tokens. And when they're exhausted, take it, exhausted. Okay. Now one of these, what do we got? Tentacle. Another turn token for, for the corrupt this time. Your starting point, your faith. For the faith side. And a couple of these. I think they said these are altars, I believe. They have it. There they are. So those are all of your tokens. Oh, one more down there. No cityscape, it looks like. And a bag to hold nothing. There you go. Different kinds of cards. Got lots of lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of cards. Okay. So you got a sword. Tentacle. Looks like Apocalypse cards. So let's take a look at each of these, what they are. Again, I put the uh, sleeves on them. The sleeves were not included in it. They were an add-on for the Kickstarter. Um, Game of Souls. Whenever the Sins player adds a token to a space, all heroes in that space take one corruption. Okay. Mantle Skull, since player gains uh, strength and a tentacle and fights against heroes with an in innocent token attached. Dr. Gan Unleashed, Soulbender, strength of four, defense of four. When revealed, summon Dr. Gan to an unblocked nest. If Dr. Gan wounds a hero with an innocent, hero must take one extra wound or the innocent dies. If Dr. Gan is defeated, remove him from the game. All right, so the innocent, i find one of those. Out of here. I try to find an innocent. Uh, probably flipped them over. One of these here. One of the non player characters that I showed you are on the back of these, the blue. Of course, you can't find one when you're looking for it. But anyway, the innocents. Are, oh, there's one right there. So that's what they're talking about. One of the innocents. Or the innocent dies. Okay. Then we have Gord and Vex unleashed. The demon spawns. When revealed, summon Gord and Vex to an unblocked nest. When a fight with Gord and Vex begins, the Sin player may activate his Acolyte ability without marking it. If Gord and Vex are defeated, remove them from the game. Okay. We've got Mantle Skulls. Sin player gains a strength and a tentacle and fights against heroes with innocent tokens attached. All right. Grin unleashed. The Fist. Uh, so he goes to an unblocked nest. At the start of a fight with any hero in an innocent grin, deals that hero one wound. A grin is defeated, removed from the game. Got it. We've come for you. At the beginning of each round, the Sins player adds one nest token to each of two different districts. Throne of Damnation, Acolytes and Abomination to each gain one defense. Game of Souls, whenever the Sin player adds a token to a space, all heroes in that space take one corruption. All right. So that was the sword all right testing the faith now we got this one here flip this over the fog of hate districts with any physical corruption tokens cannot be used for their city actions 
Got another one here. Marguerite Unleashed, Soul, Bl Soul Blighter. Revealed summon Marguerite to an unblocked nest. When a Sims player moves a monster, he may also move Marguerite one space. Marguerite is defeated. Remove her from the game. Got it. Darkness Beckons. Raise the Apocalypse track by one at the end of each round for each hero at maximum corruption. Agony of the Unclean. Before rolling for corruption tokens, a Sin player may choose to treat them as fire tokens instead. Pain Daughter. Flay Unleashed. Flay gains two fists in fights with heroes with corruption level four or higher. If Flay is defeated, remove her from the game. Again, four strength, four defense. Hellfire Curse. Each monster gets plus one defense during the Sins player reaction. And of course we got the Hate Spawn. We got two of them. Heroes at corruption level five or higher cannot wound Gord and Vex. If Gord and Vex are defeated, remove them from the game. So those are for this side. And then we have these, which are Stab in the Dark. Each abomination gains a uh, Fist in fights. Dr. Gan unleashed. Five strength, five defense. Dr. Gan gains a tentacle while in space with any fire or corruption tokens. So if you get him out of the game. Perpetual Inferno. The Sins player places an additional fire token at the start of each round. Scurrying in the dark. Monsters may move one extra space. Marguerite Unleashed, the Fire Queen. If a hero is wounded in a fight with Marguerite, put a fire token in that space. If she's defeated, get her out of there. Grin Unleashed, the Demon, the, the Demolisher, excuse me, looks like Bane. Five strength, uh, five defense, nice. Revealed, summon Grin to an unblocked nest. Grin gains a strength while in space with any fire or corruption tokens. He's beaten. Get him out of the game. Hellfire mutation. Each acolyte gains a tentacle in fights. And that is those cards. Excellent. And we have some more cards. We have the mini cards. Again, you have upgrade cards, the dark past cards, and you have your sin cards for pride, for sloth. So again, these you don't use all these cards. So if you're going to play the sin of pride, you just use this deck here. If you're using the sloth team, you use that deck. You don't use both these combined. Okay. So again, evil regroups. Damned if you do. Loan the Dark, Curse of Ego, start of hero turn. Draw a sin card and gain a reaction token for each lone hero, unless heroes collectively take four corruption. Pride or Fear, Price of Hubris, Abominable Fury, Halfophobia, Hate for our master, start of a fight. If you wound or corrupt the hero during this fight, draw two sin cards. Cursed Fate, Primal Conceit. That's one group of sins for mini cards for pride. You've got sloth. Abominable fury, start a fight. Each abomination in this fight gains one fist. For our master, punish the idol. Hate, sleep dust. Slouch in the dark. Start of hero turn, move up to three monsters, one space each. Wow. Curse of the crawl. Slouching towards Bethlehem. After an abomination is destroyed, current hero takes two corruption. Cursed fate. Primal lethar lethargy. Damned if you do. Evil regroup. Start of hero turn. Move up to two monsters, one space each. So that's for sloth. Now, of course, you get these, which are your dark past cards. So, tr slightly troubled, too. Hero takes one wound. The guilty one, raise apocalypse track by one. Former Hell Club. Hero chooses take three wounds or three corruption. Oof. 
Psycho a psychopathy trigger hero wound self and all other heroes and same or adjacent spaces by two wow suicide pact hero is killed at the end of the round tainted one this hero joins a sins player as a five strength five defense monster oof clear conscience no effect so it looks like these are number two three four five six seven maybe these are for the levels of the game could be here on your uh, your mission progress so if it's part seven there you go seven if it's six you get that one not sure again you have to read the rule book a little bit more about that what the dark path about dark path past is used and of course your heroes are fighting to save the world from all this bad stuff happening they need upgrade power cards to make them more formidable the ice blade again now Again, I'm going to bring this to your attention. You have loads of expansions. You have the Apocalypse, you have the Delta Team, Gamma Team. You have, you have Wrath, Gluttony, Greed, Envy, Sloth. You have a whole bunch of different expansions. To keep them straight, right there, it tells you right there on there. This is for the core box set right there. That letter A tells you it's the core box set. Very helpful, especially when you take the other expansions and throw the, the, the cards in. You know, all of a sudden, you're, you know, you're like, oh, what card goes with what? Well... Again, look for the icons. It tells you exactly what box sets they go in, whether it be Delta, Gamma, the Apocalypse, or the regular base box set, like these are, the base game. All right, you got the Ice Blade. You got two of those. Hazmat Suit, two of those. Railgun, two of those. Brutality, gain one fist during fights. It's an ability. Cyberware, you can move three spaces per turn instead of two with cyber legs. All right, these are only one each. A couple of them were two. So the Ice Blade, it's two of them. Hazmat Suit is two of them. Railgun, it's two of them. After that, it all becomes singles. So we talk Brutality, Regeneration, Cyber Legs, we read that one. Inner Mastery. At the start of your turn, you may raise or lower your Corruption by one. Seeker Grenades, the weapon. At the start of your turn, you may destroy one Acolyte in your space. Cool. Holy Water. It's an item. After you finish moving, you may teleport one acolyte or abomination in your space to one space away. That's good. Flamethrower. Flame on. While fighting two or more monsters in your space, you get two extra dice. Very cool. Stealth suit. T you take no wounds when leaving a monster, a space with a monster. I don't know if these cards are used uh, only once and throw away, or you can hold on to them. Uh, Kevlar suit. You get plus two defense. That helps. Raven Corp, Eye in the Sky, all rolls if you are alone, you add one die. Adrenal Wear, plus one dice to your skill roll. And Riot Shear, you get plus one defense. And those are your upgrades. Those are pretty helpful. They should make you more formidable against these heavy-duty evil guys. All right, move that over to there. got our boards so you've got corrupted doctors once per round some of the dead doctors join a non-ranged fight before dice are rolled mark the current hero who may not heal wounds until next round you can get a corrupted hobo the end is near thanks for telling us oh by the way the doctor has got two strength and two defense once per round summon a dead hobo to join a non-ranged fight before dice are rolled current hero chooses one of his upgrade cards and turns it face down until the end of the round. Again, two and two. Back, it just tells you it's an acolyte. And you have a corrupted nun. Once per round, summon a dead nun to join a non-ranged fight before dice are rolled. Then replace one of the city actions in that district with a corruption token. So those are your three options for acolytes. Corrupted hobo, corrupted doctor, or corrupted nun. Again, if you uh, get the other expansions, Envy, Greed, Wrath, Gluttony, uh, Lust, I believe. Yep. You would uh, get um, additional acolytes you can choose from. Additional baddies that you can also use toward, during the game. So that's that. Got more stuff in this, in this core box. Has lots and lots of stuff in there. All right. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. You've got tracker boards. You've got the Apocalypse Tracker. 
board for pride and sloth again if you're using pride you use this deck if you're using sloth you use that deck okay this tells you who they are the abominations the controller and your avatar your avatar is seven and seven controller is four and four abomination is three and three so let's take a look at sloth yep they're the same yep they're the same so if you choose sloth the abomination three and three controller is four and four Avatar is seven and seven. Ooh, strong baddie. Slows down heroes. Heroes that start a fight are marked until the end of the round. Mark heroes have move one fewer space per turn, minimum of one. Your hero may take one wound to ignore this for a turn. Sloth, uh, pride, sorry, that's sloth. In the back, it tells right there it's sloth. Pride, beware lone heroes. When a hero fights alone, ignore one defense. So they're stronger when they're alone. Okay, the Apocalypse track. We'll put that down over there. Oh, hard to read with uh, the red blurs, it seems like. Reveal Apocalypse card. Sin's player may summon an additional monster each round. Reveal Apocalypse card. Sin player gets plus one reaction token every round. Reveal the Apocalypse card. And six Sin's player gets plus one dice in every fight. Seven Apocalypse is here. Each hero takes two wounds and two corruption at the end of each round. Yeah, it's kind of blurry when you get up close for the Apocalypse track because it has red coloring, sure. All right, we'll put those over here as well. Put those on top of these cards. Health tokens. That's cool. I like these, actually. The little, little heart. So those are your health tokens. There they are. Got a whole bunch of those in the bag. All the same. These are your corruption tokens. Little tentacles. Very cool. I'll show you how those are used in a minute. But again, you get a bag full of those. Got your face dice. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. On your face dice, dice, you have your faith symbol, your shield symbol, your fist, an eye. You should have no, no blank on this one. There you go. So you got seven of those. Here are your sin dice. Get seven of those. On here, you have a tentacle, a fist, a flaming fist, and a blank. There it is. That's for the dice for the sitting player. You've got your bases for your, these are for your, uh, each of your players depending on whether they're a brute or saying whether it's the leader. Um, picture gets green, and that'll be explained to you when you see the player boards. And the black one goes to, that goes to one of your characters, bad guys. I think it's for the Acolyte. Uh, not the Acolyte, I think it's for the, I uh, what it's called. As soon as we pull out that, I'll show it to you. So hold on. All right, so we got some player characters. Anyway, that's those. You've got your... Again, Fixer gets the green base, Bruisers get the red base, the blue get the shooters get the blue base, and your leader is where it gets the yellow base. Um, so these you just pop those out because you don't need them. Okay, so they come right out nice and easily. Get rid of them. This goes in here. So when you check in your corruption, if I put it on a table here, you can see exactly how much corruption you have at that point. And it goes up your track like that. That's how that's used. So that's your tentacle. So it tells you, again, for, for corruption in this game, it, it's, it's a two it's a two edged sword. It's a positive thing and it's a negative thing. What's the positive thing? Well, positive thing is uh, the higher you go up in your corruption, 
that you get your benefits. So you get a plus one die, you get plus defense, plus strength, you get plus one die to roll, you get plus two strength, and you get your choice what you want. But here's the problem. You're up here, three, four, five. All right, let's say you decide to go up to five. All of a sudden you get one of those cards that says add three corruption. Six, seven, uh-oh, eight. If you if you max your corruption and it goes plus one, so it'll be number eight, what happens is your character becomes evil and he is corrupted and he becomes one of the others. And basically you lose the game when that happens. So you try not to get your characters. Again, you're all working together. It's a cooperative game, so you're all working together. So you don't want your characters to get, you want to get corruption, but you don't want to get too much because it ends the game. Okay, and again, this is your leader. Okay, it's Leah. Okay, her little slogan thing here. Again, she's a strength three. Uh, that's her searching ability. I think it's three, and she gets her one, is one defense. And this is her special ability here. In the back, it just tells you what team is part of Alpha Team. Okay, so that's her. That's Leah. You also get Brad. Shooter. Two shooters. Brad and Rocco. Get Morgana, who's a bruiser. It's a vampire, regeneration. You get Thorley, who's a bruiser. You get Rose, who's a fixer. I believe it's going to have to be explained in the rule book what a fixer is, what a bruiser is. You know, a shooter is uh, pretty obvious, a leader is pretty obvious, but I'm not sure what they mean by fixer. Can they fix things? I'm not sure. At the end of your turn, you may choose one accolade or abomination anywhere on the board and teleport it one space away. All right, that's cool. Again, these things, they pop right out. You don't need them. Let me put that over there. Carl's a shapeshifter, so he changes from this. Uh, classic swarm tactic, simple but effective. Shapeshift. At the start of your turn, you may switch to your wolf form. As a human, you gain one, that's the uh, anti-tentacle, uh, to your all your fight rolls. And then, whoop, if he transforms, he becomes the wolf man. Okay. At the start of your turn, you may switch to human form. As a wolf, you may move an additional phase. So, human, it's again, it's a two strength. As a wolf, he's four strength. Again, he can search as Carl, but he can't as the wolf. And it's two defense versus one defense. So if you're going to get in a fight, you turn into, you, you kind of wolfen. And then when you want to search a room, you turn back to Carl and he does that. Again, pop that out because you don't need it. Right. And that is your team of heroes in this game. Now, you would say, is that enough? No, of course not. There's even more goodness in this box. This box to me is chock full of stuff and it's almost endless it feels like, but you can't play the game without the tiles. So you need tiles. On the back side of the tiles, it's a city scene, scenic city. And there you have them right there. Most important is the front. So here we go. In the front, it gives you identification. It's S05, so when it you, tells you to map, you're gonna play a game. You flip one of these over, it tells you which tells you which board you're gonna need. Uh, so, and it'll also tell you which direction to look at it. Again, your icons, it tells you what you need and what you have here. Very cool 3D looking photograph. Very cool. Okay, that's one of your boards. Get another board. Again, the icons are explained and how to use them in the game. This is your second board. Your city scene. There you go. Third one. Again, the icons will be explained to you. This is board one. Board S6. Again, the icons. It's like some kind of doctor's office. Again, another icon. This is board number nine. What did it say up there? Cults and Madness. Looks like it's inside a museum, it almost looks like. All kinds of stuff on display. 
could be a treasure room too, not sure. And your icons are explained in the game rules. Again, not quite sure what's going on here. It looks like a discotheque down there and people kind of sitting around hanging out. Right. Could be people being absorbed. Not sure exactly what it is, but figure it out in the game. Looks like some sort of bridge. Maybe an entrance coming in. That's where you're going to go. Might be, not sure. And your icons are explained. When you play the game, you look at a rule book. It has, a nice, it has a science fiction feel. It has a horror feel to it. It has all kinds of different things. It's, obviously, it's in the future. So, so it's designed a little, the rooms are designed a little differently. But it's cool. Again, the placement of the board, they'll, they'll tell you on the map when they when you're going to place the tile down. It tells you what you know whether you're going to put it this way or put it that way. It's all explained on the uh, maps. So that's cool. And that is tile number seven. Here we have tile number eight. It says on here, it says occultum, occultism book fair. All right, got a book fair happening here. Some guy getting engulfed in some kind of gas. Some guy with a large cape on. All during apocalypse. We're still going to these events, huh? All right, cool. Last board is board number three I have here. Again, they weren't in order. I think you got 10 boards total. Okay. Ladder going up. Okay. And there are your tiles. But that's not it. We got what they call, we got more. We even have more in this box. So they come in these little brown packs. Open that one up. Ah, that's right. I painted some of these. So here's some of our characters. These are the blue characters. These are our main characters. So there you go. It's Morgana. Again, I'm not the greatest artist, uh, you know, doing painting, but I think it makes the figures pop a little bit more. So she's a hero. There's Carl. Yeah, they just make the figure, it, you know, it just makes the game pop a little bit more. Another guy. Another one. These are all your heroes. They come in blue. I guess the color of faith. All kinds of weapons. A lot of detail on them. Very cool. One of your bruisers. Demon-like character. Takes a demon to catch a demon, right? Didn't we learn that? And uh, what was that game called? Hellboy. Right? She is. Another guy. I believe that's Rocco. And Carl, when he turns into a wolf, I spray painted him, but I have not yet painted him. I started doing a little bit on the sword, but didn't get around to finishing him yet. But that's the wolf itself. So those are all of your good guys. Didn't mean to hit the camera, guys. Sorry about that. Then we also have another box. The others. Has the other figures in it, and we have lots of these figures here as well. So let's see what we got here. We have multiples of each of them, so you get two of these. These are your acolytes. So 
you get two of those. Two of these. get two of these and you know they're possessed because of the, oh, the, the tentacles or revived from the dead the tentacles you have two of these there you go they popped in About that sometimes it weaves in and out the camera you guys know how it is there you go you get two of her come on now there she goes Again, they're all great looking miniatures. Once again, Simon has outdone themselves. Get two of these guys. Oh, he's got a peg leg, this guy. Okay. And let's see what else we got here. Uh, you know, the, the nun. Corrupted nun. Okay. Looks like a corrupted altar boy, almost looks like. Another nun. Camera's fighting with me a bit here to get this one clear. Sorry about that, guys. There it goes. Just popped in place. Okay. The end is nine guy. What a nine guy is here. All right. Hold on. There he goes. A little signboard. Not, oh, I'm sorry about that. Not sure why he's in gray. Not sure why he's in gray. Not primed. There you go. There you go. Here you got two of them. Okay, so that's and there's the, and there's the duplicates of each of the ones that I just showed you. So you get a whole bunch of those acolytes. Put that over here too. You also have some more of these, which are your your hell team. So before when I mentioned the black base, so he, he's an actual, he's one of the people that would get the black base, to know that he's one of the leaders. Okay, that's why he would put on there. Okay. Okay. Again, some more specialty figures. Two. Oh, come on now. I just saw I pop in. I just pop back out again. There they go. Again, some beautiful figures we got here. High amount of detail. Beautiful figures. Take more of them. Again, these are the colors they came in. They didn't. They I didn't spray paint them black or anything else. That's the color they came in. 
Uh, each color depicts the different characters in the storyline. So you'll see that pretty easily when you look at the rule book. It breaks it down right off the bat. It's hard to pick out the details when they're this dark, though. It is. Uh, and you get two of these guys. Very cool. Now the black ones, you, you only get one of each. Uh, you get two of these guys. These are the abominations. And you get two of these guys also. get two of these which are really really cool to look at it's like a demonic version of the guy from Ghostbusters the green guy that's floating around all right so you get two of those You get two of this guy. You get two of this guy. So you get three sculpts in general. This type of figure. For a total of six of them. Now this one here normally is gray, but it's prime black, so it's a little bit harder to see. I apologize for that. I was hoping to have them painted up by the time I did this uh, unboxing, but didn't get around to it with the holidays and everything else. But there he is. The big guy, the guy that was able to get him mostly done. And again, those are the extras that we talked about, the duplicates that you got. over here even even more goodness on top of that and then we've got the biggest of them all the big baddie the apocalypse himself and there he is again prime black I was gonna hope to get him done and painted up before the unboxing but unfortunately I didn't get around to it so I'd rather do the unboxing than finish up the painting but again you could see right off the bat do some dry brushing right away makes all those things pop immediately brings it to life right away but unfortunately like i said i wasn't able to get to it the, the creature is monstrous again hero versus him that's a big task for any of them but there you have it so this is everything Go back up here a little bit and bring this up. This is everything that's included that we just talked about in this unboxing. That's everything that's included in the core box of the others. Be prepared or be consumed. Again, coming in right under an hour. So again, thank you for spending all this time with me for this unboxing. Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you enjoyed it, throw us a like, leave a comment below. 
Uh, if you can, uh, you could always subscribe to our channel. This way you know when we are releasing any other unboxing videos or any other content. Again, thank you for joining us. Be safe, be well, enjoy the remainder of your day, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.